Hey, I'm Leroy from War of Ages, and you're watching SoundLink TV. What is up? This is Trent with SoundLink TV here with Leroy Jenkins from Wage War. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Already. Already. <laughs> we had a, it's not a bad thing, though. Yeah, we had to throw it in there. Yeah. No, uh, for real, we're here with Leroy from uh, War of Ages here on their headlining tour with Earth Groans and Convictions. And, you know, Earth Groans talked to us earlier. They said they're they're liking the tour and everything, the crowds and all that. So uh, how's it been from your perspective as the headlining band? I think the the one thing that I, I said with my guys, I was like, you know, this reminds me of, like the Pride of the Wicked days. Like mm -hmm. back when, uh, you know, I mean, we, we do decently well on tour, but it's significantly better this time around. Um, and I think just because the market's changed. But at the same time, you know, we've been consistent you know, with our material and coming out with songs and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it's more of a consistency um, as far as what we've been doing. But it's way better than something, I, I would say, since our last headliner, which was good too, but this is definitely better. Yeah. I would say stronger War of Ages um, uh, turnout. So, okay. yeah. yeah. So, uh, you said the scene's changing. You know, you guys are definitely a veteran band. You know, you guys have been doing this for a long time. So, in what ways versus now, because I'm sure the, people who found you you know back then they're probably like you know in high school now they're like early 20s mid 20s and stuff so they kind of grown up with the band right. and stuff and so you know how's that been seeing them growing up i guess still coming to the shows and, and as well as like connecting with the younger fans as well it's kind of surreal just because of the fact that like you know i hear we hear it all the time where like i used to listen to you guys when i was in middle school yeah. you know or there was a, a girl last night that said i listened to you guys when i was still in elementary oh, you geez. were the first <laughs> band you know she was a bit younger but like definitely out of school now and i'm just like you know we've been doing it for like 15 years so doing a long time but i mean just in general i would say like um, the biggest thing that we've noticed is when we first started, there wasn't a lot of touring bands. Um, and there definitely wasn't the large, there was like one large package tour going on, which was like Warp Tour. Yeah. You know, and then it came, this influx of like all these major tours came in where you had like Sounds of the Underground. You had like so many large, large package tours that I think it's, it, it killed all the smaller packages because yeah. they could just see them in the summer. So it was a lot harder to get on the smaller package tours. It was even harder to get on the big package tours. And then, uh, you know, it just so the market was so different and kids had so many choices of, of shows to go to. Whereas now, those larger tours are kind of dying out. So now it seems like more of a touring market. So with these like um, small tours like this, you know, where there's three band package, whatever, it, it's a little more inviting. Okay. As far as with, um, you know, people to come out, they don't have as many choices. So it's like, okay, War of Ages or one of the other two tours going on this yeah. month, you know. Yeah. So, okay. now, uh, so at least I think. That's yeah. just my thoughts, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so uh, another thing we talked about, you know, with, you know, Earth Grounds and their label Solid State is similar to, like, what Face Down is. You know, like, there's you guys are sort of, I guess, the carrying the torch of that label now, you know, after, you know, a lot of the bigger bands broke up or moved to other labels and stuff. And so... What's that culture on that label like now still with, you know, some of the smaller bands coming up and you guys, I guess, being, you know, the veterans on the label, you know, kind of is face down sort of paving new ways for their, their bands, you know, the next crop of bands to come up and sort of reach the status that you guys for today, Plea for Purging, all those bands reached uh, uh, back in the day and all that. Yeah, I would say like, um, I don't know, maybe carrying the torch, you know, is, is a good way to put it, but at the same time. Jason knows what he's doing. Like, he's done this for a very long time. I mean, we talk about veterans. He's done this even longer than I have. So um, he's very smart with his finances. He's very smart with how he runs the label. He's genuine, you know, and that's seen and known in the industry. Um, you know, he gets a lot of flack for certain things that, he, you know, that I, w I would say he doesn't really deserve. But, you know, he runs his business the way he sees fit, and he's done very well, and he's been very successful. So, I mean, as far as, like, us carrying a torch, I mean, we believe in the label. We believe in what they're doing. Um, bands come and go. We'll come and go at some point, you know. But um, in general, we've kind of we've kind of molded our band to where we can continue to do it. Yeah. You know, our home lives have... have have been able to support the fact that we we tour in a band you know um we've been smart about our own finances so you know a lot of that model was taking taken from face down and how he does things and how he runs his his, his ship so i mean just in general with us we we kind of mold ourselves around that too i guess you could say carrying the torch but at the same time we're a part of a body of yeah. water that's moving you know and face down is the ship and we're just you know helping it coast yeah. Um, but a lot of bands do that too. And if another band strikes up and, 
shoots past us like Florida Day did and whatever else. Sick, you know, we'll just be that steady, steady ride that we're we're riding that wave. And you know, we catch a big, big wave, that'd be that'd be dope. Yeah. But really we started this band just to minister and to, to reach kids and to give them another side of the fence, um, you know, ministry wise that they've either don't know about or they do know about but just give inspires them, yeah. you know. So yeah, I would say it's a lot of things have changed. But at the same time, carrying that torch for face down is important to us yeah. too. So, yeah. Now with the new record and stuff, you know, being a, you know, like you talk about the ministry aspect of the band, you guys being a Christian band and stuff, you know, some bands, you know, they they're like, yeah, we're a Christian band, but we're just Christians in the band. Some bands are like, yeah, we're a ministry band. And so, like, you know, being, you know, being in that type of a market and stuff, you know, how progressing from album to album and stuff, you know, what kind of content do you? focus on and stuff like what's on this new album because there's a lot of new stuff on this album that you know it's not I, I, what you call ministering per se but right. it's more of like how how cultures are in some ways or shape or form so like what what was the thought process being behind on this record lyrically and stuff and theme wise while still maintaining that I guess that ministry aspect of your band I mean it's just where I'm at as a lyricist at the time you know I mean a lot of what I've been through is I've, I've fought through so much of my life that you know I try to keep the focus on that and and what we can like, what we can strive to become rather than focusing on what I what I what we did in the past yeah. um, but using those things we did in the past to help shape and mold our future you know so I mean as, as far as um, you know, you're quite, when you were talking about like Christians in a band or is this ministry or whatever, I've dealt with that for so many years yeah. that, you know, like really honestly, you know, to be Christ-like is ministry. Yeah. So everything I do, whether I'm with my kids at home or I'm with my wife or I'm with my, um, with my band on tour or I'm, you know, playing music or writing music or doing a music video or talking to a promoter or whatever, it's all ministry. I'm, I'm here to minister. I'm here to do exactly what, you know, Jesus called us to do was make disciples. So, you know, I don't sit there and, and, and get up on stage and say, this is what you're supposed to be doing. I, I, but in a way I do in my lyrics, yeah. you know, um, I'm here to love on people and do whatever. And my whole band feels that way. You know, it's not Christians in a band. We are Christians. Yeah. So of course we're Christians in a band, you yeah. know, <laughs> you know, and, and, but at the same time, we're here to be Christ-like in every single member of our band believes in that fact we're not perfect yeah. but we do believe that that's what we're put on earth is to love and is to minister to people and make disciples and all we all collectively agree with that whether people want to label us as this or that or you know whatever it honestly could care less yeah. i I, yeah. It, I don't care where we play i don't care what tours we go on it just never mattered to me okay. you know we just go out there play with hate breed and do the same thing we would do whether we were on tour for today you know, we just go out there and we just do what we do. Okay. So now, uh, one thing, one thing you hear a lot about with bands who who are Christian bands or were Christian bands is like they talk about the tour life, the band life, seeing the world, kind of like shape their faith and sort of, I guess, you know, sort of brought them away from it in a way or, or whatever. So like, I guess for opposite for you, like doing this for so long, seeing all this stuff, you know, what has it been that you've seen that's, you know, I guess held it together? I mean, you take God out of any equation, you're going to fall apart. He's the foundation. He's the mortar. So in general, those bands typically take God out of the equation. You know, once they do that in whatever way, shape, form, or fashion, they're going to fall apart. You know, and if you want to do that, you want to go that route, good luck. You know, but one thing that we've done is kept our foundation strong. Um, like I said, we're not perfect, but our king is. He's perfect. He's perfection. So as long as we follow a king and not a man or idolize something else, we, we're fine. We'll be fine. Well, our structure will be intact because he is our brick and mortar. You know, we, we built our foundation on that rock 15 years ago, 20 years ago for me when I became a Christian. I've learned every day culture does shape and mold us, you know, and experience and traveling to other countries, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it's not going to shape and mold an, a non-changing God. You know, he's still God, still Jesus, still died on the cross, still loves me no matter what, still shapes and molds my future, knows my past, all those things, nothing's ever changed in that aspect. So if he's unchanging, then how is culture going to shape and mold me and change me and my viewpoints of who God is? <laughs> it's not going to happen, you know? So, I mean, it is what it is, and, and usually I can look into people's lives and go, yep, I know where your focus is, I see it. I don't have to tell you about it. You can tell me about it if you want, yeah. you know, but I just sit there and go, yeah, okay, okay, whatever, dude. You know, I've had, there was one guy, if you don't mind, I don't know how much time you have in this, but there's one kid that was um, 
we had a show and um, came into the green room and you know he, I could tell he's like kind of bummed and whatever else and then he just mentioned to us he had mentioned the fact that um, there was this um, uh, situation that happened in his life and uh, in the situation that happened in his life it was uh, his he not talked to his father in years and then his father and him got reconnected okay and they healed a lot of wounds things were great and then his father passed away so he was he was saying that he was angry with God because his father was taken away from him and I'm just sitting there and and you know reaction sometimes isn't my best strong my strong suit but I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I, and I just was real with the kid I'm like bro can I be real with you I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard before in my life and I go let me explain it to you I'm like you had this terrible relationship with your dad okay eat like Eve crazy I'm like God brought him back into your life to heal those wounds and then took him home and you're upset about that does that like tell me that tell me how that makes sense you're upset he, you healed all these wounds everything's great and then God took him home took him to paradise yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and you're you're pissed yeah I'm like to me, being a believer, knowing the and you the fact that you are too or were or whatever you claim to be now, I'm like you know that like it's not like you're stupid. You know that line of thought. You know where he's going. You know all that stuff. I'm like so the fact that you're upset just sounds stupid, you know. And he was like, never thought of it like that. Maybe I was a little harsh, but at the same time, I feel like they know better. You know better. If you know the truth, you know better. You know, and yeah, sure, life's hard, life sucks, life is hell, I get it, you know, yeah. I've gone through so much, I've been kidnapped, I've been, you know, molested, I've been, you know, tried to commit suit, I've been through so much. And it's like, but my God still pulled me through all that, you know, so, and and he's the structure, he's the brick and, brick and mortar, he's the, you know, so it's, it's kind of like, I just sit there, I go, I know that truth, so if I know that truth, then everything else is just so trivial. You know, so. All right, so um, you got this new album out and everything. Uh, what, what can you're on this tour now? So, what can fans expect from you next? You know, for the rest of the year, you got any uh, plans to do any more tours, festivals, or anything? Yeah, anything like I that? Mean, we've got. Um, uh, we're about to announce our Europe tour. We've got a little Cana uh, Canada tour that we're going to be doing um, right after that. Uh, then we're going to do ne finish it up with New England Metal Fest. Um, and then after New England Metal Fest, I'm going to take about four months off because my wife's having a baby. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, we're having our fourth little one. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to spend some time at home, blacked out like four or five months. Um, at the end of summer, we're looking to tour again, um, possibly another headliner. We don't really know what it's okay. going to look like now, but um, that's, the, that's the hope. That's yeah. what we're planning on doing. So. Yeah, something you mentioned earlier about, you know, you work around your, your I guess, quote-unquote, real life with the band life and stuff now. And, I, and I'm hearing, like, a lot of bands, you know, older bands doing that. You know, they're doing stuff at home with their families while they still make time to tour and all that. So what is it that you do at home um, to, to, I guess, pay the bills, per se? Like, what do you, what is it that you do in your, I guess, real life now that... what they get to be able to tour and all that. Well, I own a company, so um, I own a carpet cleaning business. So, and, and, and actually, it was a blessing. It was something that we, we were able to get into and then uh, had the opportunity to buy it over a franchise. And so we bought into the franchise and then took it over and then bought it completely. Okay. Um, so that is, we've been fortunate enough in that area to, to be able to do that um, and to have the finances to do that. So, yeah, I mean, just in general, um, that's what we do now. That's where we've been at. That's what, that's what has happened. Um, so, but it's allowed me to tour. And a lot of the other guys in the band as well, like the same thing, like they have different things that they do at home. Yeah. Or Jack, our guitar player, he owns his own studio, so it allows him to leave. Um, you know, just stuff like that. There's just different things that we've done and, and you know, been able to, to kind of work with and do to create an outlet for us so we can go and tour. Is it, is it ever weird, like, I guess, being a businessman, business owner, meeting somebody like, yeah, you know, I scream in a metal band, you know, on, you know, touring around and stuff. They like it. <laughs> I, I, at least I think they do. I mean, I don't really promote, you know, I don't really promote, but I just kind of do what we do, yeah, you know. I got you. All right, man. Well, thanks for your time tonight, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys later. I'm Trenton with Soundlink TV here, hanging out with Leroy from War of Ages. Thanks for watching, everybody.